I don't want to soapbox too much. We got Jonathan in Arlington. How are you? Hey, I'm pretty good. <coughs> You're on the line. This is my second time calling. I enjoy your show. Thank you. Uh, um, the reason I was calling was, about, first of all, I'm a theist caller, uh, much like the previous caller. I believe in a God that is um, unfalsifiable. In other words, um, you know, can't be demonstrated. <clears throat> and, and do you have any good reason why you would believe in anything that's unfalsifiable? Well, my, my primary reason is that, that that's how I was raised. So that's my since default position. From there, uh, from watching your show and from doing research, I gradually uh, transitioned from uh, the fundamentalist belief uh, as far as holding the Bible as being the inspired word of God, and I'm kind of transitioning to the middle. And before crossing over, I'm in this position of belief in an unfalsifiable God, if that makes sense. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, it makes sense in the, in the, in the, in the sense that I've heard other people say this before, and uh, it doesn't make sense in that I have a really hard time grasping how anybody can both understand that they believe something that they don't have a good reason for and actually still believe it. Um, well, my, re my, my reason, my reason that, that's the reason why I, I, I was indoctrinated. How, that's how I was indoctrinated, I believe. But the reason why I still believe it is because I mean, it, it provides hope, it provides happiness for me. And to sure. me, that's a, that's a good reason. I, I, I've heard that quite a few times, but my question is, don't you care whether it's actually true? Because oh, if, it, if it's not true, does it really matter that it's providing hope, and isn't that false hope? No, I, I do care if it's true. Um, but when it's concerning something that's unfalsifiable, the truth to me is kind of moot, because I can't ascertain that truth in, that life, in, in this life. Uh, the belief that I, the God that I believe in is a God that, that is the creator of existence, and that I, will, that I will meet upon my death after I die. <laughs> That's something that, while I do care about the truth of that claim, I, it's unfalsifiable. I can't demonstrate. I can't examine what happens to me after I die. But you, you're, you're kind of shifting the burden of proof. You're saying that you're justified in believing it because it can't be disproved. Are you going to go around believing every God hypothesis that can't be disproved? Not, not just because it can't be disproved. Because it can't be disproved is the, is the foundation, and because it makes me happy, and it doesn't, it doesn't harm anybody. Those three tenets are, are the foundation of why I believe in it. Because it can't be disproved, it's just unfalsifiable. It makes me happy, and it also is benign. It doesn't affect anybody else. Okay, I, I, and I'll, I'll let you go right after this. Uh, I, I reject your claim that it doesn't hurt anybody. I would argue uh, that it's actually hurting you, and that by accepting a proposition that you don't know to be true, you are limiting the options on your ability to discover what's actually true, and uh, there are countless things that provide hope. And, and if you're actually concerned about whether that's true, I would think that you'd take the steps to, to try and find out. But I, I know Tracy wanted now, to. I was just going to say that um, accepting unfalsifiable things as true is not reasonable. I mean, that's, that's my only point. Yeah, I, I mean, just as a matter of definition, you're being There's, there's a difference between saying I have reasons which are sort of like causes for why you believe it, like it makes me happy, versus mm -hmm. reasons that are reasonable, logical um, premises well, lo that logic, lead to the belief. The, logic, the definition of a logic is just a particular method of reasoning. So this is the, my method of reasoning, whether you agree with yeah. that. No, 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 I'm talking about there's two, different way, there's two different ways people use the word reason. You know, there may be, like, I, I, can, I can say, if somebody says to me, you know, why did all these people die in the plane crash? And I say, well, the reason is the engine failed. Um, that's not really answering their question of, you know, was there some reason, meaning was there like a, an intent behind this? So when people use the word reason, they sometimes have different meanings. And mm -hmm. when we have, um, there are certain things that people can believe that seem to make no sense. And we'll see someone do something and it seems really senseless. I have no doubt that there's an under, like an addiction, for example, it would be a good example of something for which there are underlying causes. But it's not actually like a conscious, reasonable thing to do, that you've got like these reasonable steps that are making sense and this is why you're doing it to reach this goal and blah, blah. It's not like that. There's like underlying causes for it, but it's an unreasonable thing because it actually destroys your life. Well, you say it destroys your life and Matt, you, you all Addiction I'm talking about. I, I'm talking yeah. about, I was using ad addiction as an example uh, to just say that this is something where there are actually causes for why the person would employ a thing that, that hurts them. But in reality, it's when you're talking about reasonable, as in does the person have a good explanation for why they would do this to themselves, they don't. 
But Matt, you specifically said you think it's harmful, correct? Addiction is. I was just simply well, using. He's talking, he's talking about what I said. I'm oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did. Actually, I'll, I'll hit a, a couple things real quick. One of the things that you started to say before we, we kind of interrupted you was that uh, this is your own logic. Um, you know, that, that okay, great. Um, you can have your own quote unquote logic, but you might as well be asserting that you have your own reality, in which case you've now divorced yourself from any sort of reasonable discussion. There isn't independent logics. I don't have my logic and you have your logic. There's just logical reasoning and there's just the truth in the sense that we actually share truth and exist in the same universe. But where I'm saying that, that it's, I find it harmful is you'd like to believe that the beliefs you hold don't affect anybody else and don't hurt anybody else. And I'd say that not only is that irrelevant, if it's hurting you, mm -hmm. but it's also untrue. Your beliefs don't live in a vacuum. Your beliefs have consequences. They affect your actions. They affect the decisions you make. And your decisions and your actions have consequences for yourself and for other people. You don't live as the only person on a planet. And so knowingly believing something that is irrational and trying to pretend that it doesn't affect anything is itself harmful, not to mention the harm that you're ignoring. It may be minor things. I'm not saying that this is going to lead you, you know, to be you know, raping people or murdering people or destroying. It's, it's little harms, but they accumulate. And, and my thing is that I fail to see why somebody would knowingly be irrational and knowingly take uh, risks about the truth um, when we have ways of living that don't don't require people to accept things without justification. Um, well, there's two things uh, I kind of want to uh, uh, talk about. Uh, the first thing is when you said it, 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 you know, it's possibly harmful because now I'm, uh, I, I'm. In other words, if I just accept God as being true because it's unfalsifiable and I, you know, it makes me happy, then I exclude myself from finding truth, and I don't see that as being mutually exclusive. I see. I can see uh, a scenario where I can still use scientific evidence for things which I consider uh, falsifiable, things which can be observed. While also no, 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 you're, finding, you're, you're excluding yourself from finding out the truth of that question. Oh, of that question. Yeah. Well, You've well, accepted a position without reason. And so at the point when you, be, when you accept a proposition as true, that's the point at which you stop looking for the actual answer. But if that, if that proposition, if we, if we can both come to an agreement that that proposition is unfalsifiable... We can't, can't be though. The question of whether or not a God exists is not a proposition that I, ab, that I necessarily accept as falsifiable. You said that you believe in a God... That you are unfalsifiable. Yeah, unfalsifiable. You said that you believe in a God that's unfalsifiable. That's fine. My question is the bigger issue of is that, does a God actually exist is not something that that is necessarily unfalsifiable under every definition. But if it is, then the only, the only rational position is to not accept that the claim is true. Otherwise, if you're going to be consistent and rational, how many other unsupported, unfalsifiable claims would you have to accept as true? You would be putting yourself in the position of being forced to either accept conflicting views or to cherry pick and pick the one that you like, which is what you've said you've done. But, but, but why shouldn't, why shouldn't, why shouldn't one accept something that's unfalsifiable? Uh, and you say, I'm defining the guy that I believe in because that, that makes it easy for everybody to be on the same page with this guy. You, you said you cared whether or not this was true. I do care if it's true. And I'm then why like would that. you accept the, something before you knew that it was true? Because for me, I should believe that God exists, or I should believe that there is a God, because, number one, it's true that it makes me happy as well. So there's, there's, there's more than just one truth of whether or not that God actually No, 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 there's one truth. It's either, either a God exists or a God does not exist. That's it. Whether it makes you happy is a separate question. You said you cared about truth, and I'm talking about the truth of whether or not a God exists. You're accepting that a God exists while acknowledging that you cannot possibly discern this truth, and you're doing it because it makes you happy. But why, 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 maybe why, somebody, what if somebody, what if somebody proposed to you that heroin was good for you, and you decided to accept that because taking heroin makes you happy? 